I, I probably it's a little bit academic, as you said, but uh, I think probably it's time to be a little bit academic, um, since when you want to do any research about the users and benefits, we talked about benefits and uh, outcomes and all that sort of thing, you need to look at what you know has been written, what has been done so far, and I mean properly, not just someone sat down and made up some numbers. Yeah, that, that's a little bit different story. And um, um, what we do, uh, we do a lot of uh, well-being related uh, data collection and understanding of how people describe their very own well-being at any moment of time. And please note, they are not talking about the wellness blah blah, I'm talking about how uh, let's say the World Health Organization, uh, and proper journals describing what well-being is and how we build it up and how we can talk about it. So I'm, now, I'm looking at the um, description of the last, let's say, 40 years or so about well-being. So when you look at well-being, we have uh, all these parameters uh, of how we can construct one's well-being and how a person may say something about his or her well-being and these are the domains that describe a person well-being or his or her opinion about uh, her well-being at any moment of time since it's, it's not a standard thing it doesn't stay forever uh, it changes because it's very subjective and um, obviously the, the standard of um, uh, quality of life and uh, uh, standard of living and that sort of thing are all different we need to talk about the subjective elements of it and I certainly don't have the time to go into every single detail how you describe it in a situation, especially in a facility that uh, you're running or you, you're developing or advising for, but uh, these are the domains that you would need to look at it, because then you can uh, devise services, uh, experiences, and that's how you can learn from the customers, because they, not necessarily is a taxative list, you don't think about these parameters, but when you reply, you can categorize the replies according to these domains. I know it probably is way too economic for after lunch, but sorry about that. Uh, we need to be a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, structured in, in this sense. Uh, but if you have any issues in a moment, please, you know, say that what, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, and also, when you talk about uh, subjective well-being, or as we call it, happiness, that's how we describe happiness. It's one part of uh, well-being is subjective well-being, uh, and th this is the definition of it. And this is one of the messages that uh, customers actually like to hear about. You know, I'm happy. Not satisfied, that's a different story. Every single time when you go to a facility, everybody's talking about satisfaction. You can be satisfied and unhappy. Is that true? Yes. Very much so. So satisfaction is just a very uh, a standard response to any experience, whereas the uh, uh, happiness with it or of it, that's a different story. So you have to probably change a little bit of uh, the mindset. Uh, when you talk about well-being, uh, sorry about layout, you know, computers uh, and uh, fonts and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, this is uh, the short-term happiness, pleasant experiences. You know, have a dip, have a little jacuzzi session, or have a starry night session in the pool. It's lovely. It it's, you know, lasts for half an hour, and then you go to sleep. So we, we do kind of say that it contributes to the long-term well-being of a guest. It can't do it. Uh, and especially we have two different types of well-being and Mark, I'm sure you can relate to all these kind of terminologies uh, the harmonic uh, well-being, uh, which is um, a life purpose, challenges and growth not development, you know, that's a very business-oriented um, terminology it's growth as a person, that's the harmonic and also the hedonic, which is the other part which is uh, pleasure and decreased pain leads to happiness that's the hedonic well-being as a definition and in many languages hedonic has this sort of negative connotation that hedonic means selfish or egoistic uh, because yes I, I do whatever I want and I don't care uh, about what you want that's the kind of translation of the uh, hedonic well uh, often however it's not the case hedonic well is just I know what I like and I do it and it doesn't mean that I don't give up whatever about your issues uh, okay and also wanted to give you just to give you a, a context what these results will show. This is the kind of West and East com uh, comparison of, of, of uh, services in this field. And it's a summary, obviously. I'm talking about only Europe. So that's why I'm saying that global blah blah uh, is not quite relevant. Even in Europe, we have at least four different, very distinct categories, uh, not European as such. We can't even say that. Uh, so this is just a, a short list of how uh, facilitators are used, what people, what kind of. Um, 
uh, issues people have, what kind of expectations they have, and certainly when a Western person comes to Eastern Europe, their, uh, their experiences could be very different, and the expectations are, all, of course, very, very different. So you can multiply that when, let's say, a North American comes to Eastern Europe. That's a completely different story. An Asian person comes to Eastern Europe. So this is just a, a little summary. But um, probably, um, predominantly, we're talking about curative use of uh, waters in most of the countries, uh, from uh, Estonia down to Greece. That's the traditional way of using it. And now, of course, in the last couple of years, we have the recreational leisure based <coughs> use. But traditionally, governments pumped a lot of money, literally pumped a lot of money, into the healthcare element of using these uh, uh, waters. Uh, and that's what I wanted to show a little photo. It looks like a, you know, a torture chamber. <laughs> but it, like, that's the way bath. That's what you do, so you hang off of it. And that it extends your joints, so it helps to uh, mobilize your joints. And of course, you have to do it. It's not, just, well, it's not like, I pop in for five minutes, therefore it will be fine. No, you have to do it regularly, and of course it's medically supervised because you can't just put any weight which you feel like, because it has to be checked with your body and your joint status and all the rest of it. So it's a medical intervention. However, when you talk to uh, healthcare professionals, say um, North America, even Asia, I don't even know what you're talking about, because you never, never learned about it, never heard about it, and never came across with it. So they think, oh, it's just some witchcraft thing, you know, the same as tarot cards. Something like that, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. And uh, when we, when we dig, dig, look at the research questions, um, we're not going to go through one by one, but this is based on well-being studies in general. Because there are loads of well-being studies. I mean, absolutely loads. The literature is, wouldn't fit you know, in this building. That's so you know, extensive. Well-being studies, mainly from the health perspective or the social perspective, not obviously talking about the travel or leisure or this sort of thing, but very much on the social and health. Uh, so we, we looked at all the uh, uh, research questions and we had, a, well, we stressed the uh, guest out with all that many questions. We have to have it. You can't just ask, did you like it? You can say, yeah, sure, it was fine, you know, but it adds nothing to your knowledge. So that's why we have all this, uh, it's just half of it. Uh, so uh, you will see the rest. Um, you know, fe uh, feeling uh, relaxed, feeling happy, feeling healthier, feeling rejuvenated. Don't forget, it's, every word has its meaning. So I don't I think, but I feel. That all makes a difference, how you ask. Because it's all about the subjective feeling of the person um, and the relation to uh, where he or she is. And there's the second half of the questions, uh, which obviously we also wanted to look at what kind of contribution it has to the city, shall we say, because it's in Budapest. And also, uh, most people who were um, reviewed never been to a facility like this. So it will be a one-off thing, like you know, wow factor as well. We wanted to how it contributes to visit to uh, Budapest. And you also find, uh, find out that would it make anyone even consider visiting others? Because it's the first time, and it could be, a, you, you remember that party thing that all those youngsters jumping in the corners of it? So the idea is, I mean, hopefully, uh, that they would consider that it actually is fun. It, otherwise, most of these places considered to be kind of old folk stuff. You just look around in the park, in the cool park here. It's not exactly a young, vibrant uh, place. Everybody believes that, oh, well, it's just the old fogies, yeah, whatever. Uh, I, I, it's definitely not for me. So that's a different story. So when, when you're talking about all the uh, aging population, I always add that that's very true, but you also don't forget that 50% of the world's population is under 30. So add the two things together, and then you decide who you're going to provide services for. Because maybe in 10 years' time, the whole story will be completely different because of the you know, distribution of the um, age groups, that's Asia or Africa or uh, the GCC area in the South America. It's a completely different story. And of course, the emerging uh, uh, middle class in Africa, that makes life very, very different in many destinations or in France, uh, that they are you know, uh, showing more and more interest. Anyway, these are the questions. And we also um, ask, uh, we have four categories, uh, which I, I think is a rather relevant. Any time you do any research, Please try to categorize your segment uh, based on some uh, background information. And what we did was we had the foreign visitors, we had the Hungarian domestic visitors, we had the Budapest expat residents and the Hungarian uh, Budapest residents. 
because you will see that it makes a difference. Why? Especially this one, the expat residence. Uh, Budapest is a rather popular place for expats. It's, it's a lot of it, a lot of them. And we really wanted to know, uh, because in the registration, they would just recognize them as uh, foreigners. But we wanted to know, it makes a difference if you are a tourist just for a day, or you actually are resident for, I don't know, six months, two years. What kind of impact does it have to your life? So this is just the general quality of life, well-being related questions. And uh, you know, with a bit of uh, difference here and there, but certainly don't necessarily want to go through. But uh, you also have to consider to, ha uh, to have a benchmark question. That this is that I, uh, I enjoy a good quality of life. That's a very general statement, which you don't, you wouldn't feel embarrassed to say that actually you don't, or I do. It's you don't, wouldn't say that you're showing off. Uh, so you have to be very you know, careful with these questions. But it's a general statement, and it's a good uh, benchmark figure. Um, if I'm too fast, tell me, but I'm running out of time and I don't want to do that. You know, already spend 10 minutes on talking about 4 o'clock get-ups. <laughs> um, so, uh, places where uh, the Budapest Pass Corporation has 14 different uh, units, and we did uh, the ones which were not the uh, open-air ones, just the uh, permanent all-year-round operations, and we, you know, it was a a proper sampling with uh, age and uh, population and uh, distribution of guests in terms of the corporation, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go into the, um, that kind of details. So that's one. And uh, you, uh, my colleague showed a couple of photos. That's one of the largest thermal facility in Europe, in fact. There's the Seychelles and Bath. There's the indoor place. There's the outdoor place. That's obviously, that is not thermal, before you ask. That's just a swimming pool. Uh, people may think, and also there's the internal part, so there's the say chain, you said it's, it's a huge property. Um, that's another one, which is the Gallet, which is the prime, oh, well, sorry, take it back. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful facilities, uh, uh, architecture wise, because it's an Art Deco facility, uh, and it really is, you know, stunning in, in, inside. Uh, in terms of services, that's a different story. Uh, I don't want to go into details in terms of that. So it, it's not too bad, you know, as, as even just a place. Um, you might be surprised to know that these two places, which were built for you know, local population as such, over 90% of the guests are foreigners. Um, and the, the, the locals were squeezed out pricing. So it's 20 euros uh, to get in, or 18 euros to get in for a local citizen, it's no way. It's not happening, especially not on a weekly basis. So. Uh, and it's, it used to be, uh, especially this one, it was men and women, you know, separate, uh, with a bit of apron thing going on. So it, it was kind of semi-naked as such. And uh, now it's mixed, and anybody wears, everybody wears, you know, the uh, uh, board shorts and uh, all the rest of it. So it became a tourist attraction. It's, it's not health, not leisure, not really recreation. It's a tourist attraction because it's a beautiful building uh, with lovely waters in it. By the way, you might like to know that Google, Google, uh, the new Google offices in Budapest use exactly uh, this image for meeting rooms. So it's all built like a swimming pool. Uh, it's like this wall like, would be blue, and you would have the pillars, everything. So they use the galleries as the, as the meeting rooms. I, well, it feels like you, you, you were basically immersed in water by your talk, but I don't know. Uh, and the next one is the um, Kirai, which is king one of the other Turkish facilities, which is, again, a completely different story. Uh, it used to be the, the go-to places for gay men in Budapest for many, many years. It was sort of not talked about as such, but it was obvious that that was the main, main purpose of the place, that they tried to tackle it. However, if they used it as a place like that, it would be an absolute gold mine. That's, that's absolutely no question. Budapest is not ready for any such thing. Anyway, that's a kirai. It's, well, it's a basic thing. And also there's the Lutach, which is uh, on the Buddha side, which already has a very different atmosphere. Uh, people who go there, very different in terms of segment as well. So again, it's a historic um, uh, location. And uh, sorry, the, uh, those things just um, <sighs> never use uh, you know, PowerPoint, just acetate. That's so much easier. Sorry about that. Um, so there's the Lukács, which is very much residential, still is. Uh, it has a Turkish part, it has a new part, and uh, you can see that uh, it's also used for people who had um, uh, medical treatments. So this is the chairlift that actually lifts you in the water, 
if you cannot walk in because you have some joint problems and so on. So that, that, that's a clear, is a clear water, whereas the other, uh, some of the others, they, uh, uh, the Buddha they, they don't, uh, doesn't have it. So it has a new part. All right, very nice. Uh, when you look at the distribution of what people said about uh, why they, I mean, you can see that uh, uh, the architecture and heritage, that's the foreigner of Spain. And, and as an operator, that's, that's your call. Is, do I like this or I don't like this? So do I, do I sort of lose my traditional purpose or I'm going into this, oh, I, I'm looking, I look fantastic on a photo and on Facebook, therefore I just uh, operate it for uh, visitors. So that's a completely different story. Uh, the relaxation was a, a major part. And for, for tourists, that's fun. But those who go there, this, they don't consider it as fun. So the scale is one to seven. So the uh, uh, something like four point something onto the fun scale is not fun. That's that's definitely isn't. But certainly for the foreigners, that it looks like fun. Um, and that's I think the relevant part. Um, people really said, <coughs> sorry, uh, harmony, rejuvenation, even health, happiness, relaxation, and calm. Yes, John. One quick question. Some of your slides go. From zero to seven, and this one goes from zero to eight. Uh, zero to seven, still, as you can see, it doesn't go beyond. Uh, it's just the scaling. When it was, it was paste, copy pasted. It's gone completely okay. of scale. But it's a valid point. I also noticed. I said, "Oh shit!" So seven. <laughs> <laughs> and don't cut it out, please. Um, edit it out. Anyway, so but it's the same. Always the uh, one to seven. Always one to seven. And uh, that also is a good news. So people will not forced to say something. So you could have said anything. And of course, uh, the uh, research was done after the visit, obviously. And uh, that, was, that was great uh, news as such. But, uh, uh, you know, psycho mental psychological harmony, uh, because most of the facilities are so busy, you can't have that. You will see that now, we, of course, we have the breakdown of uh, the, the results by places as well. And you will see how differently people perceive this historic sites, depending where they were, and even the Budapest Spark Corporation was very surprised by the comments, because they didn't think that people thought of that place in a certain fashion, but I'll tell you in a minute. Um, and also, uh, that's an also a little uh, insight that I would probably be inspired to take a visit based on water as such, because most of these people never did it. Uh, so that, that also a little marketing tool that people said, oh, that, that actually is nice. I should consider it. It's not just popping in, but base, uh, to base my uh, travel uh, on that uh, activity. Uh, quality of, uh, sorry, quality of life related information, how many times they visited. And that's an interesting thing that even the expats who uh, never, never did this thing uh, before, they are probably one of the most frequently visiting guests of these facilities. And also, don't forget, these, could, these people could be the best ambassadors for your place. Free, and, and definitely they will take all their friends when, when they come. Because I like it, I take you there. That's a very simple little story there. Um, and uh, um, also the experience. Don't forget this one. Those who visit it for the very first time, it's a very memorable experience uh, that that data shows. Uh, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good news, uh, that they actually thought it was a very memorable thing to do. Uh, and also, this one, that being in the spa, uh, like no other experience I had ever had before. Just, just, you know, it, it corresponds to what we discussed earlier, that it's renaissance, call it, uh, that people rediscover it because most never did it. So they said, oh, that's lovely, that's, that's great news. Oh, actually, I should, should do this. I really like it. Um, yeah. And also the social components. Uh, the locals don't necessarily do it for social reasons. They do it as a uh, personal or a treatment-based activity, whereas uh, others are also as a social consumption. That's what you have to think about. So when we, when we look at the various places, uh, you can see that there are huge differences uh, depending on where we are. And so when you say, again, general, that uh, visiting a thermal bath in Budapest does this or that, that's not true. Because some do, some don't. Some are good for this reason, some are good for that reason. Budapest is the only capital in the world which has actually thermal facilities. Stuttgart is the other one I know. Uh, but it's not quite a capital. It's sort of a capital. A little bit. Baden-Württemberg, just a bit. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so we have a lot of them. 
uh, and uh, the communication-wise, they really want to use it, but uh, they also need to know which one does what. Uh, and the various distribution you can see, um, so it's a representative sample, so just make, make a note of that. It's not just a random thing. It's over 2,400 people were interviewed, so it's, we have a sizable uh, chunk of information. Uh, we, again, you don't need to know necessarily which is which, but I just want to indicate that there are, it makes a huge difference if something is 3.8 or 5 or 1. That's, that's a massive difference in a scale like that. So when they communicate, when they uh, improve services, they have to consider how guests see their uh, facilities. Even if I have exactly the same treatment procedure uh, and operation protocol in this, this, this and this, uh, the guests perceive it very, very differently. And that, that really adds uh, a lot to the management issue. Uh, so just a, just a, a little note that uh, Rudash was uh, the most relaxing and Kirai the least. You know, Kirai was the very basic Turkish sort of place. Uh, and Rudash was the one in, actually in the morning uh, with the rooftop and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was the most relaxing as such. The Gallet, which is the uh, Art Deco place, was considered to be the best for social consumption. It may be it's a good benefit, I don't know, you tell me, if, if it's something that... Oh, yes, it actually it means that it's a crowded place. But that's what actually people like. I mean, I'm, I'm, I only have a pushchair, I mean, I'm a little bit surprised, but that's, uh, that's just me. Uh, they believe that Rush is the most health-orientated experience, which is a factual thing, it's not a negative thing, but they feel the health-related services in the place. And the Lukács, which is, uh, um, is the most... Uh, local as such uh, is the best to switch off and uh, gathered bar uh, is basically about the building so you know it's a beautiful building with some water in it that's how it feels although it should be something it should be a premium place to go it should be a fantastic venue it's not but it could be and I, I really the best was shocked by some of these results that oh, really I see mm. you need to do something probably about it uh, and this one is a technical suggest to visit other ones as well. So if you start your education of your guests by visiting that place first, they will be happy to go to others. Which probably not true if you do it the other way around. So again, this is just your know, marketing. How are you going to introduce this product to say 95% of the population who never did it? Especially if you have foreigners. Because that's what we're talking about. How to, uh, which, which elements uh, would qualify. Uh, and also um, the uh, improvement of quality of life, obviously, just uh, temporarily. Um, so I think these are the uh, key words when you talk about marketing, like switching off, relaxation, quality of life, social consumption, uh, uh, health-oriented experience, architecture, atmosphere. These are the key words that a, you know, an average person would think of when you... Uh, when they visit or <coughs> want to tell to them because that's how they can relate to uh, something like that. Uh, I also wanted to show you the first to, to hear it. Um, every year, this is the fourth year that we run the uh, Werner Spine Travel Monitor and this is uh, over um, 400 uh, operations around the world uh, interviewed. Uh, this is the, one of the results and uh, uh, also when, when Places say that, oh, well, this is all trend. It's a rubbish. It's not. Since you have the local guests, you have the domestic guests, you have the international guests. They're not the same. So all the time somebody's talking about general this and the other, tell them that I told, tell you not to believe in what they say. Uh, because it's a huge difference. Just um, looking at what people buy, and these are the good news for you, marketing, uh, shall we say. Uh, Marion just left, but she would definitely like to hear it. Uh, the number one in terms of what kind of services operators, not, not guests in general, operators. These are people who operate hotels, spas, resorts, uh, thermal, non-thermal, whatever else. So these operators, like you, most of you, they, they believe that the most growth potential we have, uh, the natural elements-based therapies, is good news, isn't it? Because that's exactly what we're talking about. So some it is not necessarily only natural, not just water. It could be mud, could be climate, could be wine, uh, could be grapes, could be a lot of other things, not eels necessarily. Uh, <laughs> and, and also services based on local resources and traditions. I have to tell you, this data consistently like this in the last four years. Uh, 
locals as well as if you think about it internationally. Uh, wake up call, I say. It's wake up. Not for me, I'm, I'm well, awake. No, no, that is for you. You've got three minutes. Very good. <laughs> I actually have 10 minutes because you wasted 10 minutes on getting guys. I already gave you five extra. Uh, anyway, um, I believe these are good news. Yeah. These are good news because the, the industry supports what, what, uh, supports what we are talking about. So even those who nothing, have nothing to do with this, they believe, based the view of the world and the understanding of the guests, these are the growth potential areas. This is what guests want to, want to have. Uh, and of course, the thermal business fits in perfectly. Fits in really perfectly, which is very good news. And the last thing, just to tell you, uh, and in terms of facilities, not services, it's again uh, something which is very uh, relevant to us, especially domestic um, guests. Internationally, uh, that's a different story, but certain locals and domestic guests are absolute uh, favorite. And it has been like this for the last four years or five years, ever since we run this international benchmark. So anytime you know, somebody asks, you can say, well, we have some evidence as well that this is what we all saying, that this is the, let's say, the uh, way ahead. Finally, uh, the, the German market is a bit different. Uh, international, uh, when you talk about international guests, they believe that the medical, strong medical component has to be the one in Germany. And in Austria and Switzerland. That's, that's because we have a German version of it, and that's exactly what they said. So, just um, you know, quick data sharing. Anytime you want to have any kind of data collection, um, be careful of not just asking uh, satisfaction because it's a different field altogether. Uh, I think it's not enough, not good enough uh, information and backup information for the industry or this group or the whole thermal business just to have satisfaction. Um, uh, the well-being component is a very strong element um, in terms of uh, marketing activity. And I would like to stress it again, because as the last slide, uh, that uh, I really would like to invite you to uh, discuss, not necessarily in this minute, this uh, educational component, to have proper education in the field, even joint activities, you know, consents and e-learning and all that stuff. Um, our university is very happy to gaster it because they believe it's, it's a very, very important thing and Budapest is a good, credible location to do it. About having you on board, and I, I'm very happy to send you the, um, let's say, the point one version of the curriculum to just to look at it, what you think about it, would be a fantastic thing as a, as, as a tool as well. Because don't forget, you need managers, you need new staff, uh, you need also young people to understand this. Uh, business, so I think that's also a very important marketing tool, and thank you. Ooh.